Hey guys, Pro1701 here. Today we're going to be reviewing part two of The Happiness Patrol. I am thoroughly enjoying this story so far. It's really hard to know where to start with this one. There's so much going on in this story. I was about halfway through it and I was like, I should have taken notes. I wasn't expecting that. There's a lot going on in this. I continue to be impressed by McCoy in this. Man, he's on fire. He is really on in this story, which McCoy's always great, but he's really on in this story. That speech he has when the guy has the gun pointed at him. Mm. And he's practically daring the guy to shoot him. Man, he's like, this is a great gun. Oh, yes, you like killing, don't you? Well, go ahead. Pull the trigger. And the other guy's like, he'll kill you. And he's just like, shut up. The way... McCoy tells the the other guy, the guy that's not actually threatening him, to shut up without even looking at him. He 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 he'll kill you. Shut up. The way he says that, I was like, when he's telling him that, it's like that whole scene, that whole speech, and then at the end when McCoy just takes the gun away from him, wraps his head around the his hand around the barrel, and just, I was like. Man, McCoy really does get screwed over on his speeches because he has great speeches that no one ever talks about. Like, people seem to remember his remembrance speech, which is great, but you have his um, battlefield speech no one ever talks about. I've called, I've literally done a video talking about how it's the most underrated speech in Doctor Who. But this one qualifies for that, too. I love his speech right there. It's so good. And the way McCoy delivers it is so good, and the look on his face when he delivers it is so good. And no one ever talks about it. I've never heard anyone talk about this speech, ever. And it's phenomenal. Phenomenal. Um, I like what he says to the candy man at the beginning. I can't forget what he says, like sweet dreams. He makes some pun about sweet, uh, or it's been sweet. Whatever he says as he goes down the pipe. Like, you could say that it was a little on the nose, but McCoy delivers the line so well that I liked it. I, I made a specific note of, I can't remember what he said, but I remember I really liked it. It's the way he delivered the line I really liked. Um, <clears throat> I like the Candyman more. and I like the fact the Candyman actually kept its word when the doctor freed him. I'm just going to say him. I don't really know what pronoun to give to the Candyman, but he's the Candyman, so I'll say him. Um, to free him. And that he did divert the flow like he promised, but then right after that he goes back after the doctor again. So the doctor has to hit him with the lemonade. Again, McCoy is very active in this one. He's very uh, confrontational. He goes, as soon as he can get to Helen A, he gets to Helen A. Uh, I like the whole part when he takes charge over the guy asking the questions, the um, census man. I like how he just takes command of it when the guy's like, you're not authorized to know that. And suddenly McCoy is like, what's your name? Who are you? You're not authorized to know that. I asked the questions. That whole bit is great. It kind of reminds me of when the 10th Doctor takes over the interview in uh, The Idiot's Lantern, I think it is. Is it The Idiot's Lantern? When the 10th Doctor is being interviewed by the police and by the end of it, the 10th Doctor is the one conducting the interview. It's kind of like that here, how the seventh doctor just takes charge and suddenly he's the one asking questions and when the guy's like, he's like, you're, you're not authorized. No, I love that. That's great. To the point to where when they go to see Helen A, the doctor's there with them too. That's, I love that. And the fact he confronts her in the room basically just to say, I'm going to put a stop to this. And then he leaves. I really like McCoy in this. Uh, I like the guy playing the... Uh, I don't really know his name, the black guy in it. I, I don't know his name. It's the easiest way to, for me to get across who he is. With the harmonica playing the music, I like him in it. He's doing uh, really well. And he's like uh, supposed to be trying to become like, what was it, a psychologist or a psychiatrist? So I like I like the fact that uh, when he talks about the candies, he's like only you know like a schizophrenic or something like that would come up with something like that. That was pretty neat. Um, I like Ace forming a bond with the one girl, um, the one that used to be in the Happiness Patrol that became disillusioned with it. I enjoy the little bond they have forming. 
Ace seems to have attached to her very quickly. Um, so I like their little bond. The whole speech about how she talks about how she became disillusioned with it and everything and didn't want to do it. I enjoyed that. Uh, the bit about, it's finally going to be over. I'm happy about that. Ah, that's ironic, at least. I was thinking the same thing when she said that. I like the one Happiness Patrol agent, the one that has to guard the waiting room, who obviously doesn't like guarding the waiting room. I like her, just the way her performance is done. She's talking to Ace. Everyone waits in the waiting room. And then she's like, and then she pulls out the gun. Although some of them don't have to wait very long. She doesn't seem very happy for someone who's supposed to be happy all the time. She doesn't seem happy. And of course, she talks about how she used to be one of the actual patrol officers, how she used to work with explosives and all that, and how she misses all that. And I'm still sitting here thinking, if everybody's supposed to be happy, aren't you supposed to be happy? But the actress playing her, I don't know why, but I really like that character. The actress playing her does a good job with, with the way she delivers her lines and the looks on her face. There's that one part where she has to fall down. It looks a little staged, but everything else she's doing is fine, so I like that character. I'm enjoying her. Uh, the little Helen A's little pet giant rat thing uh, is realized, I think, pretty well. I got to admit, whatever they did for that, it looks pretty good. I wasn't expecting it to get destroyed so easily. I thought it was interesting when they put it down in the pipe, and I was like, oh, so that's part of the thing that's making people disappear. Interesting, interesting. I wasn't expecting Ace to take it out quite so easily, but I did expect the Nitro 9 to get used at some point, so that was interesting. I can't wait to see Helen's reaction when she finds out about that, um, which I assume will happen in part three. I'd be disappointed if she doesn't, if they just, if the story goes on and that doesn't resolve somehow. Um, <clears throat> yeah, Helen A, again, I am enjoying with her. She kind of has this spoiled brat ch inner child to, into her. She does seem very childish in her ways at times and very much that spoiled 16-year-old I have to get my way, and we have to do it this way. I'm so prim and proper, and let's kill these people. Uh, but she takes, like, a small delight in it. Uh, it's interesting that the reason why they're doing a lot of that is overcrowding, overpopulization. That was interesting to find out from the census taker. You'll be happy to know that we've depopulated the area by 17%. That was interesting to kind of see kind of why all of that is going on. That's pretty neat. So I'm really enjoying this. About my only criticism is the people that dwell in the sewers. I don't really care for their mask, their mask design, whatever creatures they're supposed to be. I, I, for some reason, I don't take to it. I'm, I mean, don't get me wrong. It looks original. I can't think of anything else it really looks like. But just for some reason, every time I see one of them, I get put off a little bit. I just don't really care for that design at all. I did like that part when one of them says wicked and the doctor's like, oh, you've been learning that. You've seen my friend. And then they make that comment about brave and captured. She's like, yeah, brave and... The, the doctor's like, brave and captured. That sounds like her. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I really like a lot of McCoy in this. Uh, and I'm really liking a lot of Ace in this. Again, she has that energy, like I mentioned in part the part one review. It's interesting for Ace. She seems to connect with other females pretty well. Because there is always that, you know, that popular fan theory that Ace is either bisexual or possibly even lesbian. And, uh, you know, you see possible undertones to that in survival. Now, I, I do think that's one of those, if you see it, you see it. If you don't, you don't. And that can go either way. But I, it, it did click into my head here how quickly she attaches with the former Happiness Patrol agent here that they seem to have a bit of a bond to where even when she's being taken away, my ace is like, what are you doing with my friend, you know? She's already calling her friend. So... While I'm a firm believer of if you want to believe that about Ace, that's fine. If you don't want to believe that about Ace, that's fine, since they've never really stated either way. Um, I do firmly believe that this is something else you can point to towards that. If you do believe you know, that she's bi or lesbian, that you can point to this as one of those things. Because she does seem to connect with other females instinctively really, really well. I have, I have caught on to that. So that's interesting, too. Um, but yeah, I'm really enjoying this story. I just watched part two right after doing the review of part one, and I wasn't expecting to do that because it's like two o'clock in the morning, but I'm off tomorrow, which is great. But I, w I was expecting to watch part one, do the review, go to bed. But I liked part one so much 
I thought I wanted to go ahead and watch part two, and I wanted to go ahead and get the review done for it while well, I was as fresh as my mind as possible because there's so much going on in part two, so much of it that I liked that I wanted to try to get it down before it all slipped in my memory. And I'll probably watch part three tomorrow because I'm very much enjoying the Happiness Patrol. It, again, I see parallels, the parallels people draw between it and Paradise Towers. But I'm really liking this story so far, really, really liking it. So that's my thoughts on part two of The Happiness Patrol. I would like to know what you think of it. I want to give a shout out to my subscriber, Lance, who sent it to me. Every time I say that name, I always think, Lance, every time, Lance, I don't know. Um, <clears throat> but I want to give him a shout out and say thank you. I really appreciate him sending me this DVD and another story that we'll be getting to. So I really appreciate that, Lance. I want to give a shout out to two of my top tier patrons, Stephen Crane and The Fifth Doctor. I appreciate their continued support. Uh, if you would like to join my Patreon, there is a link to that down in the description below. My P.O. box is down there as well if there's anything you would like to send me to look at, Doctor Who related or otherwise. I uh, also have an Amazon wish list with several Doctor Who things and several non-Doctor Who things on it if you would like to take a look to that. I look at that. There's a link to that down in the description below. Most importantly, though, thank you for watching.